Hello, Nathan Addict. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 19 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma, and you can find me on the internet, mostly on Instagram and Ravelry, as Selma's Knits. Welcome to, um, to you returning viewers. Welcome to you new viewers. Um, you are, well, there are more and more of you coming to join me on every episode, and it makes me incredibly happy and grateful. So thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I hope you're well. The weather is amazing today in Paris, so I think I will go and take a walk at some point in the afternoon. Well, right now, I can see that there are clouds coming in front of the sun from time to time, so the light might be fluctuating a bit, but I hope it will still be uh, fine enough. Whew. I need to try not to speak too fast. So, today we will talk about knitting only because I have had basically no time to um, get the sewing machine out and sew anything. So I've just been knitting for the last two weeks. And I have so much going on at the moment anyway that uh, I need all the knitting I can get. <laughs> so let's uh, grab your cup of tea, grab your whip and uh, let's get going. So today I am drinking a tea from Le Thé des Muses, it's called Equinox and it is blueberry, raspberry, vanilla, banana on black teas and it's really good. I was about to start with my finished objects, well the finished object actually because I have several whips going on at the moment which are quite long-winded so I didn't really have time to finish anything else, but I made a new hat. It's the Rike hat. Uh, I don't remember the name of the designer, I'm sorry, but I will write it down there. It's a very basic hat. It's just um, knit and pearl rolls, so it's a very social knitting, something you can bring with you to a knit night or on a, on a, to have a coffee with friends or anything. It's the second one of this sort which I make. The first one I actually lost last time I was in London in December 2016. Lost it at Liberty of London actually. Because I, I, I put it in my pocket and then I took my hand out of my pocket to put my mitts on and I did recognize that the hat had fallen and when I came back to check it was too late. So I've been wanting to make a second one for quite some, quite some time now. And here it is. It is going to destroy my hair, but I need to show you. So I will sacrifice my hairstyle, or my lack of hairstyle anyway. <laughs> there you go. I made it much slouchier than the first version when I showed it to my husband yesterday, because I finished it last night. When I showed it to my husband yesterday, he was like, Mmm, nice, you can put all your hair and also drugs and probably a pet in there. And yeah, <laughs> it is very large. But I don't mind, I like it that way. Can pull it on to cover my ears completely or not. I know it's I know the hat season is almost over. But I don't really care. I like my hats. You should know by now that I'm a bit obsessed with hats anyway. This week I wore a different one every day. It was really nice. Because it's still pretty cold in the morning, so my hat is fine. Mm, not too bad. Okay, not too good either, but doesn't matter. Um, I used the leftover yarn from the previous version I made. It's exactly the same one. It's Tosh DK by Madeleine Tosh in the shade Onyx. But as you can see, the old one has much more yarns to it. You know, it's it has more gray and not only black or charcoal. I alternated them um, on the last three or four rows there so it would look a bit more natural the fading but it's basically only on the part which is knit with smaller needles to make it fitter you know on the head so it's not shocking or even really visible when you actually wear it um the only thing is i really need to wash it and i will add definitely some vinegar to the water because it already stained my fingers when i was knitting it and I recognized that with a 
first one, and I recognized it again with this one, that it does bleed quite a bit. I think the, the water will probably be, be pretty dark when I wash it. And I don't really fancy having a black forehead. Not my style. Sorry, I'm, I'm really thirsty today. I think I don't drink enough, generally speaking. So that was my foreign, my, my finished object. That was my finished object. I have three whips currently going on. Oh, that's actually four, actually. That's four. Uh, I will start with something very, very new to me. It is socks. I've started a pair of socks. It's the Kuvastin uh, pattern by Vera Velemeki. I'm really sorry if I butcher uh, Finnish. That's the that's the bottom. That's um, the sole of the foot, and that's the top. It has lace on the back, that pattern, and I think it's going to be really nice. I'm knitting it with um, Tuku wool sock. That's what the pattern calls for. So it's 80% Finnish wool and 20% nylon. I'm not going to attempt trying to actually give you the name of the colorway, but it's T-Y-Y-N-I. And I have no idea how to pronounce that. But anyway. So I'm following the requirement of the pattern, just I'm using um, 2.75 needles when I think that it actually calls for 2.5 because I tend to knit um, tight. I'm having a bit of a problem with my magic loop there. I think the, the, the cable is too short and it doesn't, well, you know, it spreads too much. So the sides might be a little wonky. I think I need to get a pair with an 80 centimeter cable instead of 60, which I have here. It's a bit annoying, but oh well. So it's my first pair of socks and I chose one which has some lace on the back. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue because the, the diagram, the chart is pretty simple to follow. So yeah, so far I'm liking it. I'll be very careful when I get to the heel though, because since I've never knitted any socks, that's the part which uh, stresses me out a bit more. The second work in project I showed you last time, I think, but I didn't go much further. It's the Lille Kimono. So it's a baby cardigan, which I started last time. Uh, I didn't go much further because since it has markers everywhere, for now it's a bit annoying to actually um, knit in the subway. But I should get going because it's for my sister-in-law's baby and she's supposed to give birth like in two weeks, next week. I should, I should go a little faster. Um, yeah, also, I did lose some time because I recognized when I was like there, basically, that I was lacking one stitch on one of the sides and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find which row it was where I missed it. And since, well, the shape makes it a bit hard to actually rip off only part of it. So I just ripped off everything and started <laughs> Yeah, well, probably if it had been for me, I would have gone um, with one stitch, one stitch less because it's on the side, so it was not, it wouldn't have been really visible because the fronts, well, it was on the right side. Anyway, the fronts are slightly overlapping, so it's not exactly um, problematic if you actually have one stitch too much or one stitch too many or one stitch too few. But yeah, it's not for me, so I don't want to offer something which I wouldn't be 100% satisfied of. My last, my last public finished object is, no, finished. My, I'm very confused today, right? My last public um, work in progress is a new hat. It's the Ridgeline hat by Tin Can Knits. It has color work and so far, it's been really nice to knit. Um, I'm knitting it with Ulysse from Derirum Natura. The white is the shade Goelon, the grey is Sel, and the last contrasting color will be um, Baleine Bleu, so Blue Whale, Star Blue. It's 100% uh, merino and it's very pleasant to knit with actually it's very soft and um and i'm really liking it so far 
I like the, 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 the colorway pattern. It's just that at some point you have three colors per row, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I think it's going to be fine. We will see. Yeah, another hat <laughs> again. The last work in progress is, um, it's a mystery cal. So if you don't want to hear about it, it's the lunar phase M cal. And uh, I would advise you to go directly to the end of the part where I talk about it. I will tell you down there when it actually is. And I will insert a short break so you can, so you don't actually get surprised, you know. <laughs> The lunar phase MCAL, it's, it's, it stretches on four weeks with one clue per week and it follows the phases of the moon, hence the name. So far I've finished the first two clues and um, it's very surprising actually. Because, so the clues come on Friday nights. And so far I've managed to finish the clue on like Friday afternoon. <laughs> before the next clue um, comes. So that's the first one. It's basically a fan shape. On the camera, it's not very obvious that I chose um, different colors. It is more visible in real life that you have nuances and you're changing color between the... So D, the stars, this one, which is... You can see it better in real life because it has... Um, it's sparkly, you know, it has it has a Stellina. So between this one and that one, which is A, the moon, and between this one, which is C, the night, and this one, which is B, that's the transition color. It is more visible in real life that they are different. So that's the first clue. The second clue, I put, yeah, uh, I should say that when you get to the end of the clue, you actually put all the stitches on hold. So we will see how you're actually supposed to assemble them in the end. I don't know. The second clue, actually I preferred that one. I prefer that shape generally speaking. So it's a it's a half circle. And I don't know if you will see it better there. But you're alternating between the stars and the moon colors. Yeah, it's much more visible in real life as I was saying because of the glitter in the in the yarn. But yeah. It's um, it's surprising, to be honest, because I really have no idea. I'm really curious what shape the shawl will have in the end. Again, you put all the stitches on hold. And I also use the thread, which is way too long. <laughs> A piece of yarn, which is just getting tangled everywhere. Um, I forgot to remove the stitch, the progress keep right here. Yeah, I'm actually supposed to block them and I should do that definitely because you when you get to the next clue you see the supposed shape and size and measurements of the previous clue and um, somehow I feel that mine will be too small. I don't know. I uh, I use the same um the same what's the word? The same needle size as um required by the pattern. But I, would I think I will need to block them quite aggressively for them to stretch enough to actually meet the size. We will see. I'm not really good at estimating the, the, the size of things, so I can't really say if it's going to be fine or not. And if not, then well, it's going to be too small and I would say shit happens. I will have a different show. <laughs> so I'm 60% um down the down that that um pattern because the first clue was 25 percent the second was 35 the third will be 25 and the last one will be 15 percent um i haven't started the third clue yet i haven't even printed it because my printer is low on ink and i actually made mistake on the first clue because the ink was so light and wonky and everything that i <laughs> misread the pattern basically i couldn't see properly and i i missed something so i had to rip off 80 rows it happens again um 
Yeah, but I will definitely start it either today or tomorrow. The third clue, I mean. Because since I always finish on the day of the next clue, I really don't want to actually um, to actually miss that, you know? I'd like to be able to finish it on time. <laughs> we will see. Please keep your fingers crossed for me. Um, well, we're done with that one, so we can go back to our uh, regular program. So welcome back if you've uh, if you've um, passed the part where I talked about the lunar phase MCAL. I will show you my latest stash enhancements now. There's not too, so much to say. I bought some stitch markers and progress keepers from a, a French Etsy shop called Sunnyside Handmade. Sunnyside Handmade. Um, I don't remember on whose Instagram I actually saw her first. And I really, really like them. So I got this one, which is a small sock. This one, which is a small B. It's going to be all blurry. That's really warm. And this one, which is a teapot. I also took that one because it has an S on top on, on it. And although it's probably not meant to mean me. I take it for me. <laughs> and the last one is a small sheep. I actually use, I'm using it on the hat already. It's really cute, isn't it? So I got two stitch markers and two progress keepers. They're, they're wood and they're actually pretty cheap. And I think, well, two francs, the shipping was very reasonable. So I think, I don't know about, about foreign countries though. But I really like them. They're, um, they're very, soft the edges you know so there 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 is no risk that your st stitch marker or progress keeper gets stuck into your knitting you know these are snags on the on the yarn and everything the second edition is an addition to my pins collection it's uh, it's the babbles yarns um pin Gosh, that's a solid. That's a solid one. Anyway, so I don't manage to open it. Anyway, so it's from Grace O'Neill. She's an Irish podcaster. In case you don't know her yet, you should definitely check out her podcast. I I didn't know her before Edinburgh, but it was really really nice meeting her there. She's a very lovely, lively person, and um, yeah, I love her logo. No, I really really like it. It's going to be. It's going to be looking really nice on me but um, yeah and I think it's a nice way to support what she does also the next part of the stash enhancement is actually books because I bought books because I love books the first one is the Japanese knitting stitch Bible it's amazing I've been I've had it in my in my uh, wishlist for quite some time and recently on one of my Pinterest explorations I found a um, chart with a um, symbol which I really really didn't understand I had no idea what it meant and um, I had seen on the publisher's website that that it was the same way that the, the diagrams on in the book were presented in the same way as the diagram I had found well, the chart we say diagram in French that's why sorry the chart which I had found on Pinterest so I thought it probably came from that book and none of my friends had it so I decided to order it it's pretty cheap actually I was very surprised by the price um, it's amazing yeah I think you can just say it like that it's not it's not as technically a stitch Bible it's more a pattern Bible because it's yeah. It's not a stitch dictionary in the more traditional sense of the word. It's a lot of charts. It has some patterns, so you can actually use them. Um, well, employ the the charts which you the diagrams which you which you have in the book. So you have socks, and I think there's a hat and mitts. Um, you also have pictures in the end to explain more in detail what some of the um stitches are supposed to um look like or be made like 
it's not the most interesting part of the book, but why not? Um, I did find the chart which I was looking for with the explanation of the stitch which I was looking for. So yeah, I really, really recommend it. It's very complete and, and it has so many beautiful patterns. It's a very worthy investment. The second book is more poetic than uh, utilitarian, let's say, or functional, but I think I'm going to love it just as much. It's the Event of Otter. I'm sorry if I butcher Norwegian in addition to butchering Finnish earlier, <laughs> but I still don't speak Norwegian, so not since the since I bought that book in Edinburgh, the Selbuvota book. So yeah, so this book I bought from uh, Patricia from the Knitography podcast. You should definitely check her out because she's the loveliest person, and uh, her podcast is really nice as well. And recently she has started presenting the mittens which are in that book, which are um, inspired by fairy tales. The book was written by the Norwegian, well, the Vottologa. I hope I say it right. It's basically Nor the Norwegian Mitten uh, League Association. And... Yeah, we already don't have a Knitters League in France, so it's a bit out of my... Um, how to say that? It sounds crazy that you would have a federation or a league just for mitts, you, mittens, you know. But why not? After all, they are a very specific part of the Norwegian knitting culture, so why not? I wish we had a French knitting league. <sighs> Guild or whatever. Yeah, maybe guild is the better word. Probably. I'm sorry if you hear stuff like birds and kids playing, but I left the window open and uh, it seems like people are, well, people and birds are having a party outside today. I guess they're happy about the weather as well. Anyway, back to the book. I still don't speak Norwegian, but Patricia has um, um, kind of dictionary of, of um, knitting terms between English and um, and Norwegian so that's that covers the most the more technical parts and I actually recognize that between my very very basic knowledge of Swedish and German and English I actually managed to understand quite a bit without too much pain <laughs> um, so the mittens are inspired by um, by fairy tales there is one inspired by, yeah, that's Snow White. There is uh, the three gold... I'm not sure that we actually have the same one in France. But three Billy Goats something? Yeah, this one. Really fun, right? I think it's going to be a really fun knit. I already have my eyes on some of the patterns. Ah, so many possibilities. <laughs> I'm actually waiting for um, mittens and soap blockers from Patricia because she makes them with her wood by hand in her farm and that's that's amazing. They are beautiful and I really can't wait to receive them. But she's currently working on them and I will be patient. So this book is sold out so I'm really happy I managed to get my hands on one. But um, you have ebooks which gather the patterns as well. I think they're available on Ravelry, so if you're interested, definitely check them out. It's so beautiful. Mm. Books make me happy, what shall I say? The... I have two more books to show you, but they are not, um, they are not purchases, they are family inheritance. My mom gave me these two books, which her mother had gotten for her when she was a kid, because this one is from 1962 and this one is from 1969. So yeah, well, this one she hadn't started knitting when it first came out. But <laughs> I think when this one was printed, she the first edition was 1962, but this one was printed in 65. So she was eight back then. So basically, is um, this one is a is a 
Est-ce que l'art du tricot, ce n'est the art of knitting? Um, it's basically lessons. So someone is playing the piano. If you hear it, I hope you like it. Um, yeah, it's very vintage pictures. <laughs> Um, it's lessons, so you have vocabulary, you have um, pictures on how to do yarn overs and, and different stitches and casting on and increases and decreases and borders and finishing and when you get to the end, uh, it's, it's, it's really complete actually. Um, you ha even have explanations, and so I saw them earlier on how to actually shape a skirt. Yeah, that's it. Shaping knitted, knitted skirts. It's not exactly something you would put in a beginner knitter's book nowadays. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it is a beginner beginner's book because it tells you here the things to look out for when you start knitting. So choose simple models, or simple patterns, read them completely. Um, um, circle the, the numbers of the size you need, check if it, it, it works with your measurements, <laughs> don't forget to need your swatch. Um, there's, there's that thing there which is a, a yarn holder that also calculates the, the length of or the number of stitches you make. <laughs> That's really crazy. And afterwards you have a stitch dictionary. I found the point de brioche or côte perlée, which is funny because I actually thought that the word brioche was a recent invention when it obviously was already used in the 60s. And we use it in French a lot, but I thought it was actually borrowed from the English uh, stitch name. And I was wrong, obviously. And there you have all sorts of, of, um, of stitches in there. You even have color work at some point. Yeah. Well, obviously black and white pictures are not the most telling, but it's fun to check in. In the end, you have some crochet stuff as well. Yeah, it's funny. She told me that her mother got, got her that book when she first learned knitting. I don't know if she actually used it that much, but at least she kept it that long. The second book is a reference book. That's what it says, that every knitter needs. The most complete of all the technical books about knitting. The biggest uh, collection of, of stitches for needles and crochet. Yeah, basically it's the same. You have all the basics like, like casting on and then the casting off and stitches. You have more stitches in that one than in, pre than in the other book. Obviously the pictures are a bit... Um, Dated, let's see. Just like the, the colors and the stitch patterns chosen for the color work are um, quite old fashioned, but I find it so funny, really. Well, good thing you, have, you actually have the charts on the side because the pictures, particularly these, are not that clear, particularly the color differences there. But anyway, it's fun. It has more crochet um, stitches as well. And it has a really, really interesting stuff, stuff page. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a knitting translation, actually. Uh, so French, English, German, Spanish, and Italian uh, vocabulary of knitting. So, so you have the, the hem, for example, which in French is ourle and zaum in German and dobladillo in Spanish and orlo in Italian. I don't speak Spanish. So my pronunciation is also probably a bit wonky. Yeah, it's so funny to see all these, you know, because the, the stitches themselves haven't changed that much, but the way you actually teach them and you teach knitting has changed so much. Um, it's really, really fun to see. So that's the two last edi additions to my um, library of knitting. The last thing I wanted to show you today is the package I received for Fibershare because I got it basically, well, short after I finished, oh, sorry. I finished um, editing the previous episode. And I couldn't tell you before that. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen it in my in my stories, but yeah. 
So the the package came from Canada, and uh, I was actually expecting it with much anticipation because um, Daniel, who sent it to me, uh, sent it basically. She sent me the receipt showing that she sent it uh, like five days before I sent mine to Canada, and uh, I received hers two weeks after mine arrived there. So I was getting a bit worried, but so as for Jan, she offered me, yeah, as a reminder, fiber share. The only requirement is that you send 200 grams of fiber. So, and the rest is up to you. So she sent me some Briggs little toughy yarn, which is two ply, 80% pure wool, 20% nylon in gray. And this one, which is, it's it's more brick red than uh, bright red as you probably see on the picture um, and um, pattern for socks which I will not knit with the stripes because it's a bit outdated for me but it's probably going to make very very warm winter socks and I think I'm going to really enjoy that uh, she also sent me this skein from do the no, from die for you it's the base is called snug that's 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and it's 110 grams 384 meters and the colorway is called more ice cream than root beer I love that burgundy brown ish color Can't wait to see what it looks like when it's knitted. And you had five minis, minis as well, which were very, very nice. It's not necessarily colors which I would have bought for myself, but they will be nice addition to my um, memory blanket. Um, it's linen and silk. It's 200, no. Yeah, I can't calculate in ounces, so I don't know exactly how much there is, but it's going to be very nice. It's not exactly soft, although it's not itchy as either, but the linen really um, balances the silk, actually. It is, it is shiny, but it's not... I don't think it's going to be slippery to knit, if you see what I mean, because silk tends to slip a lot on the needles. That's all for the yarn, but I, she also sent me some fabric, some really, really fun fabric with typically Canadian symbols, images, landmarks and everything, with all the regions of Canada. I think I will make um, a project bag with it, because it's not necessarily easy to make a to make clothing with it <laughs> at least not for me um so that's all for the crafts the the nice goodies which came with the package were tea a small pouch from david's tea with five different size uh, different types of tea so you have the probio tea probi probi tea how do you say that the organic detox the gaba guava organic uh, mother's little helper that has peppermint and chamomile and stuff and the turmeric glow and there were also it's hard uh bonbon uh, in the shape of maple leaves I guess they are with maple syrup. I think I will probably have one right after that when I'm done filming the episode. There was this small bottle of maple syrup. It's a great A amber rich taste. I am by no means a specialist of maple syrup, so I couldn't tell you the difference between various categories, but it's beautiful. <laughs> I love the color and it's very liquid you know mm. can't wait to taste it the last thing was a small um, um, decoration I should cut this plastic bit here it's a tie with Canadian 
landscape mountains we don't actually make a christmas tree every year but i will definitely find a place for it so thanks again daniel for your lovely lovely package it was so thoughtful and i really like everything about it so thanks very much for this round of fiber share um uh, yeah put all of it in the uh, pink hazel bag which i got at Edinburgh. it's perfect exactly the right size um well there we are we have seen everything today i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope the weather is nice where you are and when you're done watching this or or before you watch this you will actually be able to enjoy going out getting some sun in upping your vitamin d levels um yeah, I wish you a very, very lovely day, evening, morning, whenever you're watching this. Well, I was about to say I will see you very soon. I'm not exactly sure when I will see you because the next weeks will be a bit hectic. I'm there this week, but the well, next weekend I will be there. But the weekend after when I was supposed to want to film the podcast, I won't. I'll be in Italy. Uh, so I don't really know how I will make that work, but I will. But anyway, let's say see you very soon. Enjoy your knitting, enjoy your sewing, and uh, take good care. Bye.